Good morning, Christ Covenant. Good morning. Welcome to all of you and those that are still watching us online. We're glad to see all the families here uh, gathering as we have our super splash summer picnic today. Um, we want to make sure that also everybody has their church bulletin. Uh, many of you are grabbing it in the front, but it has all of our events. It has the order of service for this morning. It tells you about everything happening today throughout the week, and it also has a response tear off where we would want you to fill that out if you want to volunteer participate in any of the events and then you just rip it oh. you rip it off maybe more dramatic than that and then you could drop it off in the front and then we could we know you want to participate in certain events turning to one of them our first one is the apologetics course we have an apologetics class being led by Chase Pepper it is a teaching for 7 weeks they're going through different answers and information concerning Common questions or objections to the Christian faith. This is going on in the church house over there. The class meets Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So please let us know if you want to attend that. So again, if you just put here, yes, I will be attending. That will help us to plan, to prepare, to set up the chairs and everything. We also have our weekly ministries. The Cove Youth Group continues to meet at 6.30 p.m. in the church house and our cho on Wednesday nights. And our Chosen Young Adults Group meets Friday nights at 7 p.m. at Daniel Young's house. For any of those events, please contact Daniel Young. If you don't know him, he's behind the drums. So please reach out to him for those events. We do need children and nursery volunteers. That is our second item on the tear-off. For Covenant Kids volunteers, you could put, yes, I am interested in uh, serving in that capacity. Again, for children and nursery. The last event on our tear-off is the Flip Flop Fellowship Ladies event. We do have a video to give you further information on that. Hi, ladies. Consider this your personal invitation to our Flip Flop Fellowship on June 19th at 4 p.m., we're going to gather together at Ellen Dawson's home, eat, laugh, and maybe dip our toes in the pool. And who knows, there may be a few surprises. If you plan to come, bring an appetizer to share, your favorite summertime beverage, maybe a beach towel, and go ahead and grab a friend. Head over to the website to register. Don't forget your flip-flops. Also, while you're on the website, check out our other two events for this summer. Let summer begin. So again, on our tear-off for the ladies, if you want to participate and we'll be attending, you could just mark, yes, I'll be attending. Please remember to put your information so we know who you are. Father's Day is around the corner, and to honor fathers with a small little token, we will have dads and donuts day. So if you come here to a service, and if you're here 15 minutes early or whatever time, we will be serving coffee and donuts for dads. You're allowed to share it, so... Turning to a moment of praise, our Renovation Mercy project has ended. The praise is not that it's ended, but that we have collected a total of $7,269.20 for that. So we want to thank you for all of your support towards that. Again, to help our church, El Shaddai of Grace Naples, to set up their building for worship and discipleship. With that, we have another project that we're starting called the Playground Project. We were donated a playground that will be installed in 30 to 60 days. You should see a picture there and on the bulletin as well. We need to install it, put up a fence, and a mulch area. So we are asking you to prayerfully consider supporting this financially. The need right now is $2,500. Again, to install it, put up the fence, and the mulch area, I think... We can all agree it's a big improvement on what we currently have, so please help us with that. The uh, last thing is we have our Super Splash Summer Picnic happening after service, so we hope that all of you can join us. We will have food, special musical events, water activities for the kids, so hopefully you can stay. If, it, if you didn't know about this, hopefully it's a welcome surprise for you to stay with the family and enjoy that and a good time of fellowship. As we continue uh, in the service, we want to thank you for your continued giving of the Lord's tithes, offering, and alms. We want to encourage you to continue to faithfully give towards the ministries of Christ's covenant as we advance the good news of Jesus Christ. 
And last, our call to worship for this morning comes from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Let us stand together and worship God. Amen. Um, this, this morning we're going to start with a brand new song called All My Ways Are Known to You. It's a fun song um, as far as rhythm goes and, and speed. Um, it's very easy, simple. Once you hear the first melody, you're going to hear it over and over. Um, what I love about this song and what I'm, I'm eager and excited for all of us to sing together is it, it proclaims the promises of God. We live off of the mercies of God every single day. And so this is a song that proclaims those promises that he's given us um, so that we can sing them with great joy this morning. All right, so the song is called All My Ways Are Known to You.
but love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, He counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. So tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is
and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise on pray with me? Oh Lord our God, we have gathered in this place on this Lord's day to bless your holy name with all of our souls. Lord, we come into this place to forget none of your benefits. Lord, as a new day has come upon us, let us gaze upon the inheritance that you have given us in Christ and whatever lies before us, let us be able to sing of your mercies forever and ever. Lord, you are rich in love, you're slow to anger, your name is great, and your heart is kind. And Lord, we come to you thanking you for who you are and revealing to us who you are through your Son, our Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for your faithful obedience unto the Father, for doing all things so that we might be saved. Lord, we rest and we are secure in your salvation. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who has called us out as your children, and we pray, Lord, that you today, by your Holy Spirit, would bless the reading and the preaching of your word. We pray, Lord, that you would be honored amongst us. Lord, help us to focus in on the greatness of your grace towards us. Lord, help us to forget none of your benefits. Lord, we pray that you'd be with our time and fellowship after the service as we're able to congregate together and have lunch and enjoy our time as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in settings such as this, we are mindful to pray for the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and leave temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks for helping me out. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, before the children are dismissed, I want to give a big shout out to Shelby for all of her hard work for setting up for the picnic. As well as Mona and others that helped as far as the food and setup. Thank you so much for that. Now, the children are dismissed to their classes, all right? All the kids are dismissed to their classes. So I thought this would be a good day to start the summer casual series, all right? And um, after over 40 years of ministry, it's, the suit stayed in the closet this morning. And um, they were all asking me why, and I told them that I've been pressured by others to go casual a little bit, so here it is. And, and I figured that, okay, and one of the main ones is up in the sound booth. Um, so, uh, and I thought, well, because of the picnic, it's really, really a good day to go casual. So, and I really, 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 really hope that you stick around and enjoy a time of fellowship together. Today, we continue our series in the book of Ephesians, and we've been looking closely at the first chapter where we see this doxology of praise in chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. As I've told you before, in the original language, in the Greek, this is all one sentence. It seems as if the apostle begins to proclaim the mercy and the sovereignty of God, and he just can't stop. He just keeps on going and keeps on going. No time for a period, period or a comma. Now, while these verses contain some of the weightiest statements of doctrine found in the New Testament, 
I really do believe, and what I've been trying to share with you the last couple weeks, is the best way to look at this portion of scripture is as a doxology of praise. I believe that this scripture here is telling us the way God sees us. God sees us as his children, God sees us as the redeemed, and God sees us as a people of his own possession. Amen? Uh, Ems, I'm, I'm just a little hot, I think, on the microphone. Now, this doxology of praise, it has three stanzas. The first stanza, uh, we give a, a praise to God for the adoption that we have received from the Father, and that's found in verses 3 through 6. In him, in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intentions of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Amen. And then in the second stanza, we give praise for the redemption that we've received through Christ. That, uh, and we see that in verses 7 through 10. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us. Now this morning we come to the third and final stanza in this doxology of praise where we are called to give praise for the inheritance we have received as fellow heirs in Christ. The, the inheritance that we have received as being fellow heirs in Christ. So hear now God's word we see Ephesians chapter 11 verses, um, through verse 14. Hear now the word of God. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having, not, excuse me, having been predestined according to the purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who first hoped in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. In him you also after having listened to the message of truth, that is the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with the view of the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. That finishes the reading of God's holy and inspired word. Amen. Amen. So the first thing I want you to see in this third stanza is that the Jewish and the Gentile Christians are fellow heirs in the inheritance of Christ. The structure of the text in these verses make that point very clear. Notice verse 11. In him we, that is the Jews, who were the first to hope in Christ, would be to the praise of his glory. And then in verse 13, in him you, that is, the Gentile believers, also after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed with him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So truly, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen? So the fact is, the scripture is clearly identifies Jews and Gentile believers as fellow heirs, fellow members of the body, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Both Jews and Gentiles, well, believers, are fellow citizens in God's kingdom and fellow members of God's household. Both Jew and Gentile believers are fellow heirs of the inheritance obtained in Christ. Now for us, that's really not big news. But for the first century church, that was big news. That the dividing wall had been torn down between Jews and Gentiles, for all those who believe in Christ are fellow heirs of the inheritance. So notice, look again at verse 11. In him, we, that is Jew, Jewish believers, have obtained an inheritance. And then again in verse 13 and 14, in him you, that is Gentile believers, were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise who was given 
as a pledge of our, both Jew and Gentile, inheritance. So we are both partakers of a common inheritance. So the question, of course, is, is how can two separate ethnic groups become fellow heirs in the same inheritance? An inheritance, not necessarily in my family, but in some families are passed down to the members of that family. But here we see Jews and Gentiles, well, they come from separate lineages. Well, verse 5 told us in the first stanza of the doxology of praise that in love the Father predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ and to himself according to the kind intentions of his will. So how do these two become one? Through the love of the Father by predestining us in Christ. The eternal love of the Father has adopted both Jews and Gentiles into his family. And therefore, both Jews and Gentile believers, well, they have all the rights and privileges as children of God. As Paul tells us in the book of Romans, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen? Amen. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs in Christ. The text here clearly tells us that Jewish and Gentile Christians, that is all believers, are fellow heirs of the inheritance obtained by Christ. Heirs are those who, who, who set apart from any merit of their own are given the right to the family inheritance. Heirs are those who, outside of any merit of their own, are given rights to the inheritance. And so it is within God's family. Those who hope in Christ, those who believe in Christ, are heirs, apart from any merit of their own, and they are given the right to the family inheritance. This is our heirship. H-E-I-R ship. Oh, okay. Um, let me try to explain that from a, from a human perspective. Prince Charles is the Prince of Wales. And he is the heir apparent to the British throne, the oldest son of Queen Elizabeth II. Now, regardless of how brilliant, how talented, or how wise Prince Charles might be. He did not become an heir to the throne because of any merit or qualities in and of himself. Prince Charles' heirship is to the throne is because of his sonship and because of his sonship only. Get it? And so it is with us in Christ. God the Father predestined us to adoption as sons through Christ Jesus and to himself. Our adoption had nothing to do with any quality within ourself, any skill within ourself, any foreseen ability within ourselves. It had nothing to do with us. It was a gift from God. Amen? And by God's grace, we are the children of God. And if children then we are heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs in Christ. Being an heir to the inheritance in Christ is strictly because of the sonship, God's gift to bring you into his family. It's something you should be giving God praise for all the time that he brought you. You, can you believe it? Rascals like you and me into his family. Oh, but we need to answer the question, what is the inheritance that we have obtained in Christ? What is our inheritance? And to apprehend our inheritance, we must first understand that our inheritance in Christ, well, it comes in two stages. There are certain blessings 
of our inheritance that we receive here and now. And there are certain blessings of our inheritance that we will receive in the hereafter. Some of the blessings of our inheritance in Christ are for the here and now. And some of them are mentioned in this doxology of praise in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Let me just mention some of them. Our inheritance here and now is understanding that the inheritance that we have obtained begins by knowing that God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places for the here and now. The blessing of our inheritance includes the fact that before time existed, before the foundation of the world, God the Father chose us to be in Christ. <laughs> the blessing of our inheritance here and now is to know that the Father sees us holy and blameless right here and now. The inheritance includes the reality that the love of the Father has predestined us to be adopted sons and daughters. Our inheritance consists of God's grace being freely bestowed upon us, being redeemed by the blood of Christ, and our trespasses being forgiven. Our inheritance consists of the riches of God's grace being lavished on us, that wisdom and insights have been given to us to know the mystery of God's will, as well as to comprehend that all things are summed up in Christ, things in heaven and on earth. And that is just one place in the Bible. All those are part of your inheritance. How many times do you just sit down and thank God for one or several of those things? How many times do you just give God praise that he chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world? How much are you really gleaning from the inheritance that you have received right now? Because if you're not giving God praise for it within your personal lives and within your thoughts and within your reasoning, then you're not enjoying the inheritance that's given to you right here and now. Let me just share with you another place where we can find some of these blessings of our inheritance here and now. That's in Psalms 103, for which our call to worship came from. Psalms 103 tells us that all of our iniquities have been pardoned here and now. All of our diseases have been healed here and now. Our lives have been redeemed from the pit, here and now. Here and now, the Lord has crowned us with loving kindness and compassion. Here and now, he satisfies our years with good things. Our God performs righteous acts and deeds and judgments for all those who are oppressed, here and now. And he, here and now, is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness towards you. He has not dealt with you according to your sins. <laughs> he has certainly not rewarded you according to your iniquities. He has removed all of our transgressions from, him, from us as far as the east is from the west. Right here, right now. He has had compassion on us as a father has compassion on his children. He is mindful that we are but dust. And brothers and sisters, this is just a few of the blessings of our inheritance that we have obtained in Christ for the here and now. Not everyone in the world will enjoy these benefits. They are for those for whom are in Christ. But if we are to hope in Christ in this life only, 
We are of all people to be most pitied. What I want you to see is our inheritance obtained in Christ is not just for the here and now, but it also includes blessings for the hereafter. Let me just share with you a few of those. Blessings such as that our, our victory over the last death enemy. The last enemy, death. You know, the song that we just sang, you know, and on that day when my faith is... If you've ever faced death, you can know for sure that it, that is a very... That, that is going to be your test of faith. When you really feel and think that you're, the next breath might be your last, and you maintain faith in Christ, that is part of your inheritance. That I will overcome the last enemy, death. The blessing of our future resurrection to inherit a glorified body when this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. That's a blessing for the hereafter. The blessing in the hereafter to, to know that there will be a time, get this, where we will always be with the Lord. There is a blessing in the hereafter to know that one day the Lord will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death, no more mourning, no more pain, no more crying. Why? Because the older things have passed away and the new has come. That's a part of our inheritance in Christ in the hereafter. It's a blessing to know that in our future inheritance, it includes a, a new residence. A new residence in the new heavens and the new earth. And in that new residence, we will enjoy an unencumbered presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So, as the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Forget none of his benefits. Brothers and sisters, as heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, we are told not to forget the benefits of our inheritance in Christ. The, war, the, the world wants to drag you down, but the Lord wants to build you up. And he does this by reminding you and me of our inheritance in Christ for the here and now, and for the hereafter. Blessings forever. Amen? Amen? Brothers and sisters, no eye has seen, nor ear or heard, has heard, Either, neither has it entered and into the heart of man, the things for which God has prepared for those who love him. Can you only imagine what that future inheritance is really going to be like? No, you can't. These blessings are for those who hope in Christ, who have listened to the message of truth, the gospel of the, our salvation, and have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, by his grace, has revealed to us just a little taste of the things that he has prepared for us, so we should give him praise. Amen? We, as we consider the inheritance of Christ this morning, I want you to know that our inheritance, our inheritance in Christ is secure because of God's sovereign will. Notice again in verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will. Our inheritance in Christ is secure because of God's sovereign will. Amen? Amen? The Apostle Paul couldn't insist more forcibly on us become our, our becoming heirs in Christ and the inheritance we have in Christ 
by insisting that it's due to God's sovereign will and God's good pleasure. It's mentioned throughout the whole doxology of praise. Our inheritance is secure because our God works all things, not just some things, just not most things, all things after the counsel of his will. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, you need to thank God that your inheritance obtained through Christ is secure because God is working all things after the counsel of his will. What I believe Paul is being inspired to do within this passage of Scripture, the reason why he writes these words, that our God works all things after the counsel of his will, is because the Holy Spirit wants us to go beyond just an academic doctrine of predestination. The Holy Spirit wants to drive us to embrace the truth that our inheritance in Christ is eternally secure because of God's sovereign will. Remember this and be assured, the Lord says, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the beginning from the end, from the ancient things which have not been done, saying, my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Truly I have spoken, declares the Lord. Truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it. Surely I will do it. Amen? Amen. Do you believe when the apostle writes that our God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ works all things after the counsel of his will. The apostle writes these words through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to give us confidence to know no matter what, no matter how bad the world is messed up, and we all know it's really getting messed up. No matter how messed up things may seem, the purposes of God will not be stopped in Christ. We need to be the people that know that from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. Therefore, to Him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord personalizes our inheritance in Christ by securing this inheritance in us by placing the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not just by his sovereign will, but by him personally gifting us with the Holy Spirit. Verse 13 says, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. This is God's pledge to you. Now, a seal is a mark of ownership. For example, cattle are branded, and they're branded, and this brand is a seal that identifies whose cattle they belong to, whose farmer do they belong to. This is permanently put on them. Now, the seals of this world are external, but the seals of God, well, it's the Holy Spirit, which is internal in our hearts and our lives. The Bible teaches us that when Christ comes in our lives, the Lord puts his spirit in us to mark us as his possession. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. We are a people for God's possession the Lord places the Holy Spirit in us as a pledge, as a guarantee, as a promise. And God cannot lie that he will bring us safely through so that we will inherit our final inheritance. We'll get it now by the Holy Spirit working in us 
and we'll get it in the hereafter. Amen? Amen? The Lord places the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we would enjoy the blessings of our inheritance here and now as we look forward to enjoying the blessings of our inheritance in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, let us be the people with confidence. Confidence that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Today, I really want it to be a day of celebration. Usually when I introduce the Lord's Supper, I'm trying to target a particular aspect of the sermon that's really trying to give you a, a certain area in your life to examine. But today, I really desire for you to really come to the table with a heart of celebration. A heart of celebration of who you are in Christ. Because Jesus' body was broken for us. Because his blood was shed for us. We are now the children of God. And God continually nourishes us. He continually ministers to our hearts throughout this life so that we will enjoy our future inheritance for him forever and ever. So as we partake of this bread, as we partake of this cup, let us just know that this is just not even an appetizer of what we're going to get in the hereafter when we sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Where all the blessings of God will be full blown in front of us. I don't even know how we're going to comprehend it. This table before us is the Lord's table. It's not the table of this church nor the table of this denomination. This is the Lord's table. Therefore, it's for all those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, even if that just happened just a moment ago. On this table are two simple elements, the bread symbolizing the Lord's body and the cup symbolizing his blood. These two simple symbols of our redemption the body and the blood of Christ given to us so that we might be the children of God. As the worship team comes up this morning, I want us to really take time as the scriptures admonish us to examine our hearts, examine our hearts with a sense of celebration, a sense of celebration that the Lord has granted us an inheritance in Christ for the here and now and forevermore. And as we partake of these elements, that we will be spiritually nourished and built up so that we might live to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So let's just, in a time of private and personal prayer, examine our hearts. O oh Lord our God, we come to you with a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of celebration, that you, by your sovereign mercy, have chosen us to be in Christ. We acknowledge that it's not by any merit in and of ourselves, it's strictly a gift that you have given to us. And Lord Jesus, we glory in you because you have perfectly pleased the Father. You have done all things so that we are redeemed our sins forgiven. You, Lord, have sent your Holy Spirit who has sealed us as a pledge of our inheritance. Lord, today we desire to celebrate, celebrate the inheritances that you have given to us here and now and the inheritance that we will receive in the hereafter. We ask you, Lord, to feed us and to quench our thirst for righteousness. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. And the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread as I do in his name, and he broke it, since this is the body broken for you. Take, eat of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper, he took the cup as I do in his name. He says, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in the blood, with my blood 
for the forgiveness of sins. Take drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. The worship team is going to um, just sing, it's going to play some music for us. I'm going to ask you to come down the center aisle, and the elements are on each side. If you'll just take a little basket of bread and a, and a cup and return to your seat, wait until we're all served so that we might be able to partake together as a family. We'll start with the front, and then we'll go back into the back, coming to the center and exiting on the sides. Let's worship God. If you're wearing a mask, you can remove it now. If you believe that Jesus Christ was the eternal Son of God who became flesh and be dwelt among us the, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, that Jesus lived a sinless life, that he died on the cross for our sins, that God raised him from the dead, that he sits at the right hand of the Father even now, praying for us, waiting for that day to receive us into himself so that he can give us the full-blown inheritance. If you believe these things concerning our Lord Jesus, then receive now the bread of our Lord. If you believe Jesus Christ was the Holy Son of God, if you can confess even as John the Baptist who declared, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, receive now the cup of our Lord. Will you pray with me?
Lord, we want to thank you today that you have given us an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, will not fade away, an inheritance that is reserved in heaven for us. And now we are protected by your power through faith for that full-blown salvation that is ready to be revealed to us in the last time. And we give you praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our song of response this morning is entitled, He is Worthy. It's actually a song of confession. There's going to be a statement, and then the first few times you'll respond, we do. And then it'll go through another series of statements, and you will respond, it is. And then you will come to the last where a few more statements, and you will say, he does. The whole idea is that he is worthy. Amen? Amen. He is. So we want you to participate in the song as much as possible. There is a chorus in between, but it's really a song of giving praise and celebration in Christ. Let's stand together and worship God. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this it is. is anyone worthy is anyone worthy is anyone whole is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll the line of Judah Conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? All the blessing and honor and glory. Is, is he worthy? truly love us He dies Does the Spirit move among us He dies And does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those He loves He dies Does our God intend to dwell again with us Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The line of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom. 
from the slave. let us answer the question that's been asked of Christians throughout the ages. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just offer a quick prayer for uh, the food and our time of fellowship. Please, please, please stay with us as we're able to enjoy. We have some special entertainment waiting for you. Go out this side and the serving line will be right out there. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you again for your goodness and mercy, for the inheritance that we have in Christ here and now and for the hereafter. We give you glory and honor and blessing for you are worthy. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled, will not fade away, is reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And God's people say, Amen. Your perfect law exposes me. I feel my sin and desperate need. My best good works are powerless to satisfy your righteousness. But 